If you were flying and a gust of wind hit the front of your plane, what would you want to happen? Would you want the plane to require manual correction and risk losing control, or would you want the plane to correct itself? This fundamental question lies at the heart of aircraft stability design. Hi, I'm Eric Hillsberg and welcome to Aeronautics 201. Today, I'll explain why most aircraft have horizontal stabilizers pushing down, even though it's actually not the most efficient design, and why fighter jets are designed to be unstable. And yes, we'll even tie this to a famous Winston Churchill quote along the way. If you find this video valuable, please like and subscribe, and if you have any questions or topics for me to cover in the future, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. Alright, before we jump into it, let's take a minute to establish the coordinate frame I'll use in this video. Aircraft move in three directions, X, Y, and Z, with three axes of rotation. Roll, wings tipping left and right, rotation around the X axis, pitch, nose up and down, rotation around the Y axis, and yaw, nose moving left and right, rotation around the Z axis. For an aircraft to fly straight and level, we need to balance the forces and moments around each of these axes. Think of it like trying to balance a pencil on your finger. Finding that sweet spot is crucial. If you're off by even just a little bit, the pencil will rotate and fall on the ground. Let's start by talking about longitudinal stability, or the tendency to return to the original pitch angle after a disturbance. This is critical for comfortable flight, but also to prevent stall. If you don't know what stall means and are interested in learning more, check out my previous video about how planes fly. Okay, so if we're looking at the aircraft, there are two points we need to understand. The center of gravity, this is where all of the aircraft's weight is effectively concentrated, and the neutral point, also known as the aerodynamic center. This is where the pitching moment of the aircraft does not depend on the angle of attack. The location, shape, and size of the wings and horizontal stabilizer are the biggest contributors to this. Other factors include the propulsion system and the fuselage. The relationship between these two points determines whether an aircraft is statically stable, returns to equilibrium when disturbed, statically unstable, continues to move away from equilibrium when disturbed, or neutrally stable, stays wherever you put it. Here's where things get interesting. If your center of gravity is behind the neutral point, something counterintuitive happens. Yes, you could have both your main wing and horizontal stabilizer effectively generating lift upwards, which seems efficient, right? More lifting surfaces, more efficiency. But here's the problem. This configuration is unstable. If the aircraft pitches up slightly, the main wing generates even more lift than the tail, creating a stronger upward pitching moment, which pitches the nose up even further, creating even more lift. And I think you see where this is going. It's going to be a runaway feedback loop that will lead to stall. That's why most conventional aircraft, the center of gravity is placed in front of the neutral point, or rather the neutral point is placed behind the center of gravity. This means that the horizontal stabilizer at the back actually pushes downward. Yes, downward. It's creating negative lift to balance the aircraft, which seems inefficient because you're working against yourself, but this configuration is stable. If the aircraft pitches up, the balancing forces naturally bring the aircraft back to level. This reminds me of that famous Winston Churchill quote, you were given the choice between war and dishonor. You chose dishonor, and you will have war. In aircraft design, if you choose efficiency over stability, you better be careful, or you'll probably end up with neither. Another factor that affects pitch stability is the propulsion system. If the thrust line is below the center of gravity, then increasing the power will pitch the plane up. This is why pilots generally employ trim tabs when they're changing power settings. If you're curious what trim tabs are, that's also covered in my previous video. Okay. So now that we understand longitudinal stability, let's move on to the next axis, lateral stability, the ability to return to level flight with respect to roll after some disturbance. The vertical position of the wing relative to the fuselage plays a huge role. High wing aircraft have naturally better roll stability. Why? Well, think about a pendulum. The weight will always tend to return to the bottom, especially if there's some kind of damping force like the air. This is one reason why many training aircraft have high wings. On the other hand, Low-wing designs have less inherent roll stability, which is why they often incorporate dihedral, that upward tilting angle of the wings when viewed from the front. Dihedral creates a self-righting tendency in rolls, but the reason for this is not immediately apparent. Why would the lift generated on the lower wing be higher? Well, when the aircraft rolls, the forces of lift and weight become unbalanced, with a net force sideways. This causes the aircraft to have a side slip a velocity that's not directed along the longitudinal axis. The lower wing experiences a higher lift 
due to a higher angle of attack as a result of this dihedral and side slip, returning the aircraft to level flight. And here's something else interesting. Roll and yaw are actually coupled. When an aircraft rolls, it often yaws in the opposite direction, known as adverse yaw. When an aircraft rolls, the ailerons deflect in opposite directions to create lift. But this lift is not even. As you may remember from my last video, with more lift comes more drag. The wing generating more lift is pulled backwards, causing the plane to yaw away from the direction of movement. To overcome this, pilots must use rudder to execute a coordinated turn. That brings us to the third and final axis. Directional stability, or yaw stability, is the ability of the aircraft to stay in a straight line upon disturbances. For yaw stability, aircraft designers borrow a concept straight from boats, the keel effect. Just like keel keeps the sailboat tracking straight, the vertical stabilizer provides directional stability for the aircraft. When an aircraft turns sideways to an oncoming airflow, the aircraft will yaw away from it because the majority of the area of the body lies behind the center of gravity, creating a yawing moment. A major contributor here is the vertical stabilizer on the tail. Similarly, swept wings also contribute to yaw stability. When an aircraft yaws, the forward wing presents more area to the airflow, and it creates more drag, naturally correcting the yaw. This is one reason why many modern high-speed aircraft have significant wing sweep. It's not just for reducing transonic drag, it also helps with stability. So why not make aircraft as stable as possible? Well, What's good for stability is often bad for maneuverability, or the ability to control the aircraft quickly and efficiently. Think about it. If your aircraft really wants to fly straight and level, it's going to resist all of your attempts to turn, roll, and pitch it. This is why fighter jets are often incorporate features that reduce stability. Their center of gravity is positioned very close to the neutral point. Sometimes they incorporate anhedral, or downward-angled wings, the opposite of dihedral, and sometimes they have small or no vertical stabilizer. These design choices make the aircraft more responsive, but also more challenging to fly. Sometimes aircraft designers must make compromises. For example, many cargo aircraft require high wings to enable side loading, but this makes the aircraft too difficult to turn, so they employ anhedral to compensate for this. Decisions about stability and maneuverability are always made with the aircraft's purpose in mind. Many of these unstable designs were nearly impossible before fly-by-wire systems, which brings us to the modern solutions, stability augmentation systems. Today's aircraft can be intentionally designed with reduced stability for better performance, with computers constantly making tiny adjustments to keep them flyable. The F-16 fighter is a classic example. It's actually designed to be unstable for better maneuverability, and without its computers, it would be virtually unflyable by a human pilot. Some aircraft designers have even experimented with some rather unconventional configurations. One interesting example is the canard design, with the horizontal stabilizer in the front rather than at the back. In a canard configuration, both the forward surface and the main wing generate positive lift, which is more efficient, but this requires careful design to maintain stability. Another wild concept is forward swept wings, which offer some maneuverability advantages, but create some serious structural challenges. One last thing worth mentioning is how the center of gravity can change during flight. As fuel burns, the weight distribution changes, which can significantly affect stability. Aircraft designers need to make sure that there's enough margin even as the fuel is spent. This is why fuel management systems are so important on larger aircraft, ensuring the center of gravity stays within acceptable limits throughout the flight. So there you have it, the fascinating balancing act between stability and maneuverability in aircraft design. The conventional tail at the back sacrifices some efficiency for natural stability, which turns out to be a pretty good trade-off for most applications. Just like Churchill's wisdom suggests, sometimes choosing the seemingly easier path leads to bigger problems down the road. Next time you look at an aircraft, hopefully you'll notice some of these design elements and be able to identify the design priorities. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and be on the lookout for more videos coming soon. See you next time.